Hi everyone and welcome to another uh, demonstration of the Steel Detailer. Um, I'm really impressed we've got ourselves a, a pre pretty large amount of people online so if, you, if you're getting some sort of feedback or um, you know, a distortion in your screen as I move, um, I apologise, it's just that we've got full house. Um, so my name's Michael Crawford, I'm the presenter and also the creator of the Steel Detailer. Um, for those that don't know, the Steel Detailer has been in creation for over seven years and uh, just recently Quadro Design has taken over it and I still manage the process of its development and we're, uh, we've currently got three, um, three other programmers that are programming on it. Now what we're doing is we're going through processes and looking at the existing ones that were originally created by myself and we're, we're you know, making them better and faster. And one of the things is, is the bolted connections. Um, if, if you know what bolt connections are involved with as far as working with just basic solid works you've probably experienced some painful processes but you'll, you'll also realize that um, to do the non-standard connections that are required on some of the massive steel structured uh, projects that I've worked on solid works has come into its own um, it does make things a lot faster around those sorts of things um, if you're using other products I've heard stories where they are hard to use when you step outside the norm. Um, so today's webinar is going to be about bolted connections and how bolted connections are, um, are created uh, from scratch. And it's not the norm, but we've got to create bolted connections from the start and we've got to put them in our library so that we can reuse them. Now, if you've uh, recently downloaded TSD and installed it, you'll find that tutorial five in the learning area, just uh, in this area here, we've got uh, connections now <laughs> if you've if you've actually gone through that process you'll notice there's something like 26 steps to create a connection which we found was a bit too much so we've um we've we've added a new function that's going to come to uh, SolidWorks users TSD users in the next version which is uh, not far off uh, the beta version for uh, SolidWorks has just been released for 2014 um, we're simply just going to follow that we we're going to come out with our beta version uh, hopefully next week is where we're looking at uh, deploying it um, it's a bit different in the way that it's set up uh, if you know TSD we've got two separate files we've now merged it into one and we've also um, added some extra functionality that's coming your way you're gonna love one of them is uh, DSTV CNC it's uh, still in development at the moment and uh, we should have something in, in beta hopefully next week um, to test so uh, yeah, that's that's a wonderful feature. Another one is uh, obviously uh, grids. Uh, we've we've created our own grid system within uh, within SolidWorks, uh, so that uh, you know using TSD functionality allows us to block out sections inside grids, so that uh, you can you can uh, create GAs, uh, automatic GAs on the fly. Um, we've got an automatic GA creation uh, document management system, which uh, you guys are going to love. Um, so we're, we're we're continually working on uh, you know improving TSD and we're going to continue to keep doing that as long as the product is around and as long as you guys uh, you know are hanging there and using it. So let's just get into this tutorial today. Um, we're going to cover connections. So you're going to see some things here that uh, you might not have in your current product. Um, and the idea is to just uh, let you know that we are working on improving our situation because uh, you know if you're not doing that you're pretty much stagnant and uh, we want to we want to improve our, our product so that uh, you know everyone else is using it and feeling comfortable with it now currently at the moment I've got you all on mute and there's a reason for that because uh, background noises and all sorts of things come in to play and make the webinar really hard to, to, to run um, so I've, I've muted everyone if you've got any questions please uh, send, send a question to uh, support at the steel detailer um, we will answer any question you throw at us uh, if you think that uh, there's something that uh, is, is in one particular product that you've used in the past and you'd like to have it added to the steel detailer um, yeah, simply just send us an, an enhancement request we, we can certainly uh, have a good look at it and, and determine whether or not it's something that we can we can certainly add in um, because our programmers are going to be coming to a, to a halt very shortly and uh, we're going to be looking for new uh, new tasks and that might even mean just uh, you know renewing the product a bit more making it a lot more faster you know um, 
adding in more functionality, you know, to meet other other companies uh, or other products uh, sort of uh, processes. So we we certainly are there and we're pushing it. Um, what I'm about to show you is is something that's going to be going into beta. Um, there are certain things that occur that uh, we, we know we can improve on. It's just that we're trying to meet our deadlines as well to, to, to match SolidWorks. Um, if there's something in there that you see and you go, oh, I don't like that, just let us know. We can certainly have a really good look at it and remove it or update it and make it better. Okay, so uh, I've created a, um, a, a WBS in my test area of 4000. Now, if you haven't got a test area, I suggest you create a project test area because you want to play, you want to test it, you want to see what's going on. So I've, I've created that project um, and I've also got a, a connections area. Now, if you're not familiar with creating a new WBS area, you just click on the WBS over here on the left hand side. And that'll take you straight into the current project and uh, if I pull that pane out you can see I've got a WBS code so and it's two digits uh, two letters uh, so I use caps so AF is the next one and then I can just type in the name of the WBS so I know what I'm looking at and if I scroll down I can see the ad so I click on the ad that'll create me a new area okay you can modify existing area names and uh, delete codes and things like that so just be careful around that because uh, you may detach yourself from an area that you've been working on all right so that's just created the area but what we need to do now is create the assembly so that's just given in the database the new area to do that we've got to click on uh, the project area and then click on the new sorry the project and then click on the new project and that'll log us in so I've just created a whole new assembly um, and we can come to and from that by uh, logging in under the project login like I just did then all right, so I'm just going to put a basic sketch point in uh, in here, and I'm going to put a frame in so that we can work with uh, creating some connections. All right, so I've just put a sketch point in, and you can call this a uh, start uh, caps on start sketch. Okay, now ah, there's a notification for the 2014 beta two, which is just letting us know. Oh, by the way, um, I, I got documentation from SolidWorks yesterday to tell us that um, 2014 is the, the, the beginning of 64-bit, uh, 32-bit is going to be phased out, they won't be using it anymore, so just be aware of that. Um, we've built it in, we're already 64-bit, we've, we've isolated ourselves. Um, the reason for that is because there's um, a new release of uh, uh, language code that we've used that has split 32-bit and 64-bit and you've actually got to treat them separately and we knew this was coming so we just went straight to 64-bit. The reason we went 64-bit is because we want to use more than the 4 gig of RAM and uh, computers are coming out with you know, 64 gig of RAM these days so why not? Um, and we do large models. Anyway back onto the topic so let's uh, on that sketch point insert a frame so if we go into frames I've got some frames here that I can utilize I've actually got one here that will allow us to create some of the you know most difficult tower uh, connections you can possibly think of so I've got a bit of a stair tower frame here which is just a sketch okay it's a it's a, a driving sketch I'm just going to put that on the sketch point so you can see I've selected sketch point and selected my sketch point so I'm not actually driving it I'm just uh, putting it in and mating it to that position so I hit the X and close out so I don't insert anything else. So now I've got my frame to work with. All right. So I'm just going to show you um, what else you can do so that uh, you can become aware of the processes that are in TSD as well, apart from connections. So what we want to do is we want to create an end plate connection that's uh, offset from our flange. Okay. Just a connection that's not normal, it's uh, not standard, we'll do that one. And then the next connection after that is going to be a uh, hip rafter to a column connection fin plate sort of thing. So you can sort of see how all that process will work as well. Because that is the most difficult. And if we've got enough time, we'll see if we can fit in, uh, say for instance, uh, an existing connection we've got for, um, for, for a, a, a hip rafter's purlin connections. So that you can see how they work. Because they are... <laughs> very difficult in some packages, but they're pretty easy in TSD uh, and SolidWorks. All right, so let's just start off with a basic one. So we're just going to put in uh, a TSD member here, and I'll just pick anything here because I need to use my filters. I've set up in here a section filter for my model type, and I've put in two sections. And all they are, and I'll just uh, show you after I insert them, so you can see. And I'm just going to put in two here, um, so that you can see how this works. And I'll just pick that one there. And you'll notice the beam when it goes in, it's already preset, set down for a floor. And then we've got a column. And we can put that in as well. The column's already set 
for the orientation. Now I haven't rendered those and made them look nice and spiffy. You can do that. Um, we'll cover that in another day. Um, so I've just put in two columns here. Now my members continue through. What you'll notice is my members have come in. Um, this is a uh, at this level. This is what we call a welded member, and below that we've got our member section. Okay, which is just a part and you'll notice that on the part itself when I drill down into the part and edit the feature The insertion point is at the top center so that we uh, we have a set down component now I've preset that uploaded that into the library so that I can reinsert these things like that all the time for floors Now however, I can I can set it up any way I want I can even have that beam completely set up so that it's got copes and all sorts of things associated to it now this is what we call a bare member. It's got nothing on it, no connections, no nothing. Now this is um, another product's process of creating um, connections and now it's TSD's process. We've just matched it so that we can get the same functionality out of it as per um, the previous product. So we just want to uh, you know, let people know that we, we, we've matched it but we've gone that little bit further just so that we can uh, you know, drop members in with connections already ready to go with a drawing template. It just makes things easier. But if you were to do it this way, it's a bit slower um, because um, we've moved on from this process. It's it's an old way. But for now, what we want to do is we just want to create a connection so we can add it to our library. We're not going to do a member from scratch. Now, to do members from scratch, you, you have to go through this process anyway. All right. So I want to put a connection here at this point. We've got TSD connections, new connection here, right? Now, this is uh, not available to uh, to people in... Uh, in 2013 it's a release of uh, TSD which is version 4 um, it will be uh, available next week for those that uh, you know want to try out the new beta version of TSD um, on 2014 so if you just go in and, and, and select it and in here we've got the standard sort of uh, two, two digit code for our connections and in this case we need to make sure that we select the one that we want. So in this case I've just clicked in, I've just typed in EP which takes us to the end connection which you can see there. Now that's just a name and it's just a code which comes in and I'll show you where that comes in as well. So the first thing we need to do is select the point to which we're going to insert the connection. And we're also going to select the member to which the connection is going to go into, which means this one. Okay. Now I could do the other one. It's either way. But I usually pick the members to which uh, are being bolted to to put my connections in to fiddle with first, and then uh, I'll come back later and then add them in if I'm going to create a member. All right. At the moment, I'm not creating a member. I'm just creating a connection. So the next member that I'm, I'm selecting in my list is uh, is this one. Now, you can continue to keep adding members if there are more members in here. And what this is going to do is going to create a connection for you in this member with a dummy part in it that has this section in it, this member section, and this member section in it um, as dummy components for us to work with so that we can position our plates and create a connection. Now, that's a lot faster than if you've gone through that tutorial that I mentioned earlier on how to create connections. I think we've reduced it down to about 10 steps. It was 26. So we're just removing some of these repetitive processes. Um, we've also tested this process on uh, on uh, 26 different members in different directions. Um, however, the very first selection has to be uh, a 90 degree um, member. Uh, the reason for that is because that's the main member. Um, if you don't have a connection like uh, like that, you've certainly got yourself a nasty one and you probably have to create that one from scratch. However, it will create the member, um, it'll create the connection assembly and not put any sections in it if it's too complicated. Um, so we're, we're, we're working on around getting that process working a lot better than what it is at the moment. But you'll see what happens when we insert certain connections and uh, we'll create new connections and, and what we can do with them. So I've just uh, simply clicked those. Now I click my green tick. So now it goes through the process of putting in a new connection, uh, our assembly line sketches that are associated to the connection itself, putting in the new members, and uh, we've got ourselves a, a dummy connection. Now it also takes us straight into adding plates, which is great because uh, the next stage of this process is to add a plate. So I'm just going to pick a plate here and, and drop that in. So you just pick a plate, hit the tick, and that puts a plate in for us so we can actually grab it and move it around. Now what I want to do is I want to make this plate sit there on that flange right and pull this beam back and I'm just going to put in a web stiffener in behind it so I'm just letting you know that I can create any connection I like and add it to the library so let's just go through this process of adding another plate 
and down here I've got a web stiffener so I'm just putting that web stiffener in there's my web stiffener okay with my web stiffener I'm just gonna make sure that it's got a uh, yep that's just warning me to let me know it's not fixed in space I'm just gonna see if it's mid plane so I want it mid plane so that tells me that if I mate it to my top plane it's gonna be central okay just a, a little process there of just uh, swapping the extrusion around now this plate here we want to mate so that we're using the top plane and we're going to use the front plane and we're going to mate it in position now I'm going to flip that back around the other way um, it's up to you on how you want to model this anyway I can see that my origin is at the base and that's pretty much where I want to put it and I'm just going to uh, mate my uh, uh, right and my front plane to this uh, inside of that flange okay so now I've got my web stiffener in there what I also can do is if you'll notice that it's not fixed in this direction so I can actually grab it and slide it and I'm just going to grab that face or alternatively use the right plane and mate that now I, I prefer to use planes wherever there's a plane possible because it means that um, for mating purposes it can throw you out with faces so you just want to um, use planes wherever possible now I want this web stiffness so that it can um, uh, grow with the section size as I change it what I also want to do is uh, simply um, just click on the edit sketch so you can see now I've got a couple of dimensions here that I'm just going to remove um, what I want to do is have this so that it sits behind this other plate and I want to make sure that it grows with the uh, section that I'm putting in front I'm just going to put a uh, two mil tolerance and I'm going to use um, the flange edge here rather than this edge on this beam because it's not associated to that and just put it in there and give yourself two mil tolerance so that uh, you know it can grow and also want to do do this as well um, sorry the two mil tolerance is not so it can grow it's because um, so that we can fit it in there and the next one is uh, I'm just gonna put another two mil tolerance there as well so that when we do weld this we've, we've got a bit of play now the last thing you want is your plate being past the edge of the flange and then you have gotta cut it back again so we'll just give ourselves a bit of play there it's just tolerance in the beam rolling process um, two mil out is not what you'll get but it's good to have it there anyway alright so that's that web stiffener already added in and you'll notice with the web stiffener it's already got the cuts for uh, you know our, our weld around the, um, the inside radius of our beam sections we just want to open up the drawing because with every plate as it comes in we want to make sure the drawings right so we've got it already pre-dimensioned and ready to go so that's the template for that one ready to go now what we need to do is grab this plate and if we use the top plane on that plate which is this one here and go top plane we can mate it to that face okay so it means if the section size changes it's going to move with it and you'll notice that because if I rotate around um, I've got to flip it because I want it on the outside okay now let's just go around and see what else we've got to play with here now the plate itself is going to need some modifications because what I want it to do is grow when that section size changes at the moment it's just dimension so if I double click on it you can see it's got fixed dimensions what I also want to do is when I put this plate on I want to allow a weld bead across the top so it's fully welded now I'm just going through and working out where the positions are for the mating process and now that my right plane and my front plane because my front plane is running through the center this is pretty much where I want my plate to be so that I can uh, adjust it alright now this plate itself is drawn centrally so I want to open it up it's got a center sketch in it I don't want that I want it so that it's driven from the top down and the center sketch uh, the actual embossing sketch that creates this thing I don't want a dimension on there um, you can either remove it or you can uh, make it driven which means that um, it's now overridden and I can actually grab this thing and drag it as I need to as you can see now what I also want to do is just remove this center point because I don't want that anymore and I'm just going to move this down okay and I'm going to give myself my clearance so from my uh, I think it's the front yep from my front plane out to that point I'm going to put a dimension on it and allow me to have six mil now I can change that at will based on the depth of the section um, certain uh, certain uh, depths allow you to have a larger flange so that you can put um, you know, a larger weld on there which is really handy for us at the moment for a small section that this is going to be attached to six mils standard for a fillet weld now I prefer fillet welds rather than butt welds is a little a lot less uh, preparation work involved in, in, in setting up a fillet weld now also too what I want to do 
is just draw a line from center to center here and I want to lock in the position of it so that it can't do this okay so I'm just grabbing it grab that line there grab the origin or you can grab a plane um, either way is fine and that locks it in so now all I've got is growth in this direction and that's pretty much what I want so I'm just going to drag that down a little bit to about 300 300 is the size now you also notice the sketch for the centers is not there as well so I'm just going to grab the centers um, the same thing applies we grab that and if we pull it um, it's still fixed we've got some fixed dimensions however we can drag this one and bring it down now we don't want that fixed dimension there what we want is we want to use the front plane to that line and we want to make it 70 which is a standard for Australia for, for, from the top of the steel section down to the first set of holes is 70 um, and then 70 from there on so we're just going to grab that horizontal and that horizontal and go 70 okay we also need to fix it so that the um, sketch does not slide sideways so we're doing the same thing as what we did for um, the extrusion for the plate and now I've locked it in now we always go for fully defined so fully defined is locked in and now we've got our plate where we need it and you can see the dimensions that are associated to this plate um, you'll notice that this is actually set up with an edge distance in here as well a 50 either side now it's up to you you can set this up any way you like now as I said you can click it go driven and I'm just going to make this 100 so that it's set up so that no matter how big the plate grows it'll always be a hundred centers you can go either way so if you make that driven and make that driving um, then you've you've switched it around so you've got yourself um, a swapping process now typically in Australia we use uh, M20s in this case I've got diameter 22 the 2 mil is for a slot um, so that uh, for tolerances of bolts uh, you might have galvanized bolts in your project which takes up a little bit more room um, so that's what that is in Australia that's uh, that's our bolt clearance um, we've got M16 um, 2 mil right up to M24 and then it goes to 4 mil um, that's the typical standard that uh, most of us steel detailers understand alright so there's the plate there in its format now we just want to make sure that uh, our drawing hasn't uh, really gone AWOL uh, it's okay everything's looking fine just bring my, bring my dimensions down and um, just tidy a few things up my templates right to go so I close that off now I can close that plate off and what I want to do with this plate is I'm just going to use that front plane you'll notice the plane is the one that's above that we set up and we're going to use the top plane and make that in position so now that plate will grow 6 mil or whatever dimension I want by double clicking on it and changing it here okay I've got that plate what I don't have is this one here mated to the bottom of the beam so when I change it it automatically updates so I'm just going to go through this process of um, grabbing the sketch that's below it now with sketches it's up to you normal default is we usually look perpendicular to it when we're working um, depends on how much experience you've got with SolidWorks um, you can work any way you like now in this case I'm just going to add my standard 6 mil again at the bottom so I've got both my 6 mil at this side and I've got my 6 mil at that at that side um, so now at the top and the bottom I've got my 6 mil clearance for uh, a, a fillet weld and you can do a fillet weld right round if you need to if the section gets smaller we might not have enough room here to put a fillet weld um, it can be a bit painful okay so that sets up that basic process now we've got one plate however this is a connection that's going to require two plates now what we want to do is we want to use the same plate again um, and mate it to the other side now I'll, I'll tell you why we've got both plates in a moment um, and it's primarily because we need to space out um, bolts I'll tell you now <laughs> so we're going to mate that plate in place using those faces we're going to use the planes so we got front top to position this plate in place and we've got uh, right and front to position the plate where it is so if I was to change the thickness of that plate this plate would move with it as well and I'll just show you how that works so you can see it so if I make it a 20 plate watch both change okay they both change in one go because it's the same plate all right now what we need to do is just trim back this member to do that you just right mouse click it right and edit the feature or edit the part in this case we're just going to edit the part we don't want to edit the feature so we've edited the part and it goes in blue what we want to do is on this face put a plane in and make it coincident 
Now, someone will probably ask, why are you not using uh, weldment cuts on this process? And that's because weldment cuts don't update when you do a high level rebuild. When you do a high level rebuild on a plane, it moves. So that's the reason why we're putting a plane in there. So I've just exited out of context there. Now I've just right mouse clicked and I'm opening up our dummy component. I've got my plane there. What we want to do now is just trim it. So you select the trim, select the member you're going to trim and select the um, plane to which we're going to trim against. We don't want to allow the extension. That means this piece past here can grow. We don't want it happening. And you also notice there are two notifications here for trimming. We want that piece trimmed off so it becomes discarded. And that's gone now. You can hide your plane. It's up to you. Hit your tick. Now my dummy member has um, pretty much um, trimmed back. Now you can change the color of your section as well so that you can go, okay, this is a dummy member. You know, I want to change the color of it. So you just right mouse click up here, change the color, click on the part, change it to say something that stands out, nice light green. And that tells you that's a dummy component. Okay, so now what we also want to do in this process of creating this connection is just move these items up so that they're there. Uh, at the top, this will remove any opportunity for a circular reference as we work. Um, in this case, it's quite a simple sort of process. Now, I just want to show you what happens when we change a section, okay? Because we've got it all linked together, okay? So if I go to my match weldments, click on my member, and change it to a deeper section, and you'll see what happens. Oh, okay. We've, um, we've eliminated that process of being able to do that at that level for some reason. Um, so now we can uh, just change it in here. Oh, sorry, I'll go back to show you what I just did then. If you use SolidWorks functionality, you right mouse click on the face, edit the feature, okay, change the section size, and then you've got to locate the profile so that the profile's set down. And I hit my tick, and you'll notice that when I do a rebuild, the plates have changed. Um, we'll just hide that. So now you can see how my plates have grown. You might not want to have your second plate coming all the way to the bottom like this one. You might want to put a couple of extra bolts in here and then have this one finish, say, say 100 mil below. It's up to you and how you want your connection to work. In this instance, I've actually set it up so that um, it will go all the way down. And I can, however, add some sort of web stiffener in under there, depending on uh, whether or not your beam needs some sort of uh, support to prevent it from from, from uh, you know buckling in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so now we need to add some bolts. Now, under the steel detailers folder, we've got fasteners. We've got a fasteners folder. I've simply added my fasteners folder to my library over here, so I can just click on my fasteners, and I've got some fasteners in here that I use. Now, you might ask the question as to why we don't use the fasteners inside uh, Content Central or fasteners inside our toolbox, which is provided by SolidWorks at a premium level. We tell our customers that the minimum requirement for TSD is the standard package, and in the standard package, you do not get the toolbox. Um, so what we've done is we've created our own bolts. Not only that, if you do have the premium and above or professional package of SolidWorks, um, we don't use the toolbox because simply you've, you've got a link back to the database outside of the connection. And that makes it hard for us to upload it to the library um, because we want everything contained inside our connection. Um, we don't want any external references looking elsewhere. All right? That is one of the rules uh, of TSD. Um, so we cannot use the toolbox. However, we've created our own. So over here, I've got a tool, uh, an M20 bolt, and I can simply just zoom in, grab my M20 bolt, and it's got an automatic uh, smart mate, so I can actually pick the inside of the cylinder, and I'm going to change this so that it will work to an 85. So I'm just picking a bolt, M20 by 85, um, a galvanized 8.8 .8 grade, um, and it comes with a nut and washer. Now, it's telling me which way I want to turn this around. I can switch it. So I'm just going to hit my tick for my mate. And uh, now I've got a bolt that slides in and out on that center. What I need to do now is just add another couple of mates to position it. So I'm just selecting those faces. There's my bolt. And 
the ply thickness that needs to go into this. We made this in a, a 20. I'm just going to change it back to a 12 because I think 20 is probably too big for this scenario. 16 might even probably be a better scenario. Now when I selected my bolt, I actually selected the length. I can right mouse click and go to component properties and change my length to another length. What I also need to do is if I select on the bolt and expand it out, we've got a material thickness plane here which allows us to move the nut and washer out. In this case we've got a 24 ply and that brings the nut and washer out. Our bolt is not fully constrained. We've got a top plane here and I'm just going to grab the top plane here and I'm going to mate it so that they are parallel. Okay, And with that in mind, now I can go nuts with my bolts. Ah, funny hey. <laughs> Um, before we do that, it's probably best that we convert this bolt. Now we have to convert our bolts to uh, become virtual, so I just right mouse click to make it virtual. Now if you're not familiar with what a virtual component is, it's a component that belongs inside the assembly and is detached externally from our libraries. So, okay, so it's now inside this assembly. And with that we can name it. Now we can have different bolt names. I've got M20 bolt. And if you see something like this, this means that in brackets it's a virtual component and then you've got this tilde symbol which uh, also tells me that it's a virtual component. Now the fastener itself, um, we're going to copy into places, so if we right mouse click and if you go down the menu you can see copy with mates, so you click on copy with mates. Now copy with mates is a great feature that SolidWorks offer. If you um, see what's involved, these are mates. Now what we want to do is we just want to repeat these mates and keep the concentric mate free. So it means that all we need to do now is just go around and click the concentric mate uh, cylinder, which means the inside, and just add bolts one by one. It's the same bolt, just being copied into different locations and being fully mated in place. Okay. Now this is a, a SolidWorks functionality. Really handy tool. And now it's added all my bolts. I could add more holes, more bolts. I can go nuts if I want to. Now, I'm just going to let you know that fasteners have to be excluded from the bill of materials. You'll go, what? Why? Well, when we do our locks with our bolts, um, our locks with our members in a locking stage, which is a finalization process, the bolts get counted then and then added to um, the database. So it means that we can actually create a report based on the bolts without having our, our model or our project open. Okay. Now the filtering process of finding where the bolts are and what the bolt names are is based on the M that you see in front here. So you can make um, imperial bolts. In this case an imperial bolt would still be, have the M in front of it. I know it might be confusing. Um, and then you can have the name of the imperial bolt in there. But however, TSD does not pick up the name of the virtual component. It actually picks up based on the config names. So, so these are the configs that are associated to that uh, bolt. So it actually grabs the config name. Right? So you should understand that that um, is a bit different than grabbing the name. But remember, you have to have the M in front. Okay? The M tells us it's a bolt. Now I could have used B. Um, <laughs> I guess at the end of the day, you know, I wanted to isolate these things and, you know, one day it may change to be a B. But however, from now on, it will always be an M and I'm not going to confuse people because that would change the whole library and our whole library has been put together based on the M so it will be a big process for us to change it back to a B. Alright so I've put my bolts in now I'm just going to add these to folders so I know what they are um, you'll notice the naming convention of our connections come through we've got a DO1 for our dummy component and automatically through the process of TSD's new creation I've put you'll see excluded from bomb we've got plates and then we've got our fasteners so I'm just going to put these in folders so if you right mouse click add to a folder I'm gonna go dummy uh, I like caps caps is good so dummy part which is just a spatial restraint and then we've got our plates okay so we put our plates in one folder and then we've got our fasteners so right mouse click add to folder fasteners so now we've got them in folders so we know where they are. All right, now we need to test this because uh, we, we look like we finished. We need to make sure that we're actually going to get the functionality we want. At the end of the day, the connection that we've got belongs to this member. Okay, So it means that this item here needs to be excluded from the bill of materials, that plate, because we don't want that plate coming through. All right, now I'll just show you what I mean. So now if I was to close the connection, you can now see that my member... Um, 
connection is in place. Um, because it changes the section size, I can always go back and go match weldments. Match weldments means that I want to change this to that. I don't want to include the last selection to change because that's what I'm going to match it to. Click my tick and now that'll bring that back in and automatically update that section size and bring my connection back to where it was. Okay, so I'm just letting you know that there are different types of connections you can create. Now, that particular connection hasn't been uploaded to the library. We'll come back to uploading in a moment so I can show you how you can reuse that connection again. This beam hasn't been trimmed back to match that face uh, because we're not actually creating a member at this stage. So I'll just let you know that you can see that beam running through that connection. But there is a connection there. However, now if we go up to here, up the top here, we don't have anything. And I'm just going to show you how to do a hip rafter. Um, now, when we inserted the plate, uh, sorry, inserted the frame, we have ourselves a driving sketch. Now, I'm just going to select that line and that line there. And with that instance, I'm going to go up into uh, planes under my plane area here and put a plane in. So that allows me to draw a sketch line. So now I'm going to draw a sketch line from that point. And you can go perpendicular to that plane. Sort of throws you off a little bit. I'd rather just pull it around so I can see what's going on. I'm going to pull that sketch up, make them equal. And now I'm going to put a dimension on here to make it so that I've got my pitch. Um, if you can grab it. <clears throat> that might have something to do with me not looking perpendicular. Okay, I'm going to make it 10 degrees. Okay, so now that sets up a sketch. <coughs> Excuse me. I could, however, select sketch one and uh, change the name of the sketch. In this case, I'm not going to. I'm just going to s skip through this. We need to put a member on there, so I'm just going to put a new member in. Okay, so if we go to uh, our sections again. Structural, pick any one of those standards. I'm just going to use the filters to find it. Grab the beam, select the sketch to where I'm put put the beam on and hit my tick. So that puts in a rafter for me. Now, most people would struggle creating that kind of connection in most packages inside um, inside the process because we're dealing with a, a compound angle rafter here. It's not a straight conventional rafter which would come off perpendicular. We're off at an angle here and we need to be able to handle that so that um, it can change with our processes as we work. Okay. Now, in this instance, I've not created a set down which I could do to attach my beam to. So it means that I'm going to end up with a different connection for our purlins if we get there. It looks like we're not going to get there. We can come back later and look at the purlins. But simply... Put, I'm going to put a connection here so that you can see how the dummy connections work. They're not 100% because it's got to try and determine how the connection works. So over here on the left hand side I hit rafter plate. Hit my point to which I'm going to insert my connection. And then I'm going to select a 90 degree item which I mentioned earlier. Which is that one. And then I'm going to select my rafter and hit my tick. Now this will build a connection for me around that point. And you'll notice some subtle differences that are different in this case because it's a, a complicated process, but it's easily repaired. Now you'll see the, the rafter itself is not right. The columns come in at a different angle. Um, and we can simply just click on the uh, member part and open it up. Uh, sorry, the dummy part and open it up. And we can change the items that are in it by simply going into the weldment, changing that to zero. And this member here needs to be rotated around. And this is where it's complicated with our programming. We've, we've got to figure out how to get it so that it will do this. You'll notice that there's a bit, bit, bit uh, involved in the rotation of this item. If we click the uh, alignment, what we want to do is we want to align it with a vertical edge. And then that just flips it around so that it's in the right place. And that's it. That's simply it. Um, with a bit of programming, we might be able to get it so that it snaps onto the member sketch here and turns it around right. So if I was to close that... And that's the connection. We're back to our assembly. And you'll notice that we've actually matched the section sizes okay, with our dummy component. Um, now, what I'm going to do is go back to that connection that we've got here by clicking on that. And we now have this connection. All right. Now, these connections can be quite nasty in how they actually work. You can see that we've got ourselves a bit of flange here, which is good. We can work with that. However, if we change it to a different size, it might, might require an adjustment. Um, or a major adjustment. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to drop a plate in. I'm going to do some trimming.
put in some web stiffeners and set this connection up so that I can reuse it again. And now I'm going to make this a fin connection. So if I've got my connections, I'm going to insert a plate. And if I scroll down, I've got my fin plate, which I've got here I can use. Click my tick. There's my fin plate. So I'm just going to grab the front plane. And you'll notice that this has already got a preset set down based on how, um, how it works. Now if I was to grab the top plane there, that's already set up so that it'll flip round. I'm going to select that face there and that face there. Um, and you'll see that it's mated it on that side. I don't want it on that side, so I can flip it. That's the side I want it. All right. So it means now, just looking at this, I can slide that backwards and forwards. I want to grab that edge because that's the edge that sits against that face because of the angle. Okay. So it means now we've got it fully locked in place. I can't move it. It says this component is fully defined. Okay. The 35mm that I've got in this thing can be adjusted. Okay. If I double click on the boss. There's my 35 mil. I can, uh, it's telling me it's an older file, that's okay. And double click on it and go zero. That brings it up to that level there. You can set this whole cleat up to be on center if you want. I'm just winging this whole process so that um, you can see that you can convert, create any kind of connection you want. Now what we want to do is we want to trim this back so that this member itself is going to be uh, 20 mil clear of this, play, uh, of this section. So to do that, you just edit the part by right mouse clicking, clicking face, right mouse clicking. If you click this face and click plane, we can set up a plane in context inside the dummy component for trimming. Okay. And we can use this as a guide for our section. That's why I put these plates in, our uh, planes in as well. So you can use them when it comes back to the member and the connection is in place. We can trim the member section, the steel section that's in the member back to this plane. So we go over to weldments, click our trim, click the member we're trimming, click the face of the plane which is uh, not not selecting if you can't select it in the, oh here, click the white box, my fault, now I can click it, turn off allow extension because we don't want that, discard that piece and now that trims that back. Now I can adjust that plane because it's got a 20 mil offset, I can change it to any any distance I want. So that trims that back so that that's in play. <clears throat> now this plate itself, I'm going to punch some holes through that member. If I go to my utilities, punch holes, select the back face, select the face to which I'm going to punch my holes up to and that puts some holes in for me. So that sets up that dummy member for me. Now because of the cleat being where it is, it's in a nasty place, we're going to get uh, uh, bending around the center axis. Um, and because it's out where it is, uh, we need to stiffen it. So we're just going to put some stiffeners in there to stiffen that whole thing up. So if I go to my members, uh, sorry, connections, insert a plate. I just go to my stiffeners, click my tick, that puts a stiffener in. Just going to pull that around. Now I'm going to check where my plate, there we go, there's that one. I've got my plane here. So my plane, I'm just going to mate to that edge. Okay, I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to grab the other face, which is the right plane. I'm going to mate it to that face. Okay, and that allows me to grow. I'm going to edit the sketch, very similar to what we did with the other one, but in this case I'm going to keep the 75 flat and I'm going to put in a 2 mil tolerance there. So it means that that will grow. So there's my plate. Now I need to fix it so that it will not go up and down. Now, I would personally put that in there and add, say, 10 mil clearance there for a weld. Now, I want my plate on the other side. So to do that, if you do a mirror, TSD, you cannot use mirrors, but you can use mirrors to position. So I've just created a mirrored process here where um, I've selected the wrong face there, by the way. I'll do that again. So if I go back up and select my plate, select my mirror, select the plane I want and it should be on the front, no it's not the front so we'll just change that to the right, so there's the right plane because I want to mirror it about the axes. Hit my tick, uh, my, my uh, arrow and then click my tick and now I've got a mirrored component. As I said TSD doesn't pick up mirrored items so we just dissolve it, that way now it becomes a part that's in there and we just go through the process of positioning this uh, and locking it in place like so. 
doing the same thing here uh, right plane that's done front plane and through the mirroring process you'll notice that it's it's put it over that side we need to flip this like that that puts that in place and we need to maintain the same offset height so that if we change one it moves down as well okay now you can use patterns so patterns are okay for us to use in TSD come down say 300 mil and we want to make it two in the pattern and we need to flip the pattern 200 mils probably too far 300 mils uh, too far so we just might make it 200 and we can position that anywhere we like we can even change the length of the dummy sketch to pick up so that the beam and everything is associated to it we want it pr pretty much around where our cleat is to to uh, take the loading all right so now I need to add some fasteners same process again go over to the fasteners grab my bolt want it there 85 will do click my tick um, whoops and I accidentally added another bolt you can just hit delete and remove it and um, come back around we want to look at that bolt click that face mate it to the face and we're going to position our bolt so that uh, it will remain locked in place so I'm just making that parallel and now we've got it fully defined and now we need to make it virtual yes now our bolts virtual measure our ply which is going to be 17.5 uh, we need to rename this so just go through that process again material thickness uh, don't let me pick it but I'm picking it 17.5 and the actual bolt length is probably too much we probably need to bring that back to a 75 maybe a bit less 35 mil is what we use as an extension by default we had a 17 so 17 so 20 and 35 makes it uh, 35 there 55 long okay you could make it a little longer if you like now I'm just going to go through the process of copying mates make those repeatable select my cylinder put my bolts in okay the beautiful thing about this whole process is that it's 100% parametric so if I was to change the section size here this plate and all the bolts and the web stiffeners will automatically update okay you might want to add some other plate stiffeners in there but uh, however that's the basic connection that we're looking at for a very complicated process and now we've got our connection in place now if we were to be working on this we could simply just uh, you know for our member you just click on the member of the main section which is this one I've just clicked on it, it takes me over to it in the feature tree right and you'll notice that it's not fully mated in position by the way because uh, it's, a, it's a complicated um, sort of member for us to position this completely we would click the front plane we would scroll up go back to the um, plane that I created on the sketch and then lock it to that so that would make it fully defined okay so now it's not free to move I can't move now to trim it back I just simply click on the plate right which would uh, allow us to select the plane that's inside this that we use to trim um, if you can select the dummy component which is that one there that's even better that takes you to the dummy component and there's the trimming plane <coughs> excuse me you could name that call it a trimming plane but I've just exposed it I've also exposed that member there and I could trim that beam back to that sketch and then that will pull everything in a line I could then punch my holes through my member and I've pretty much created that entire connection in you know four or five steps um, to the to the section itself but now I've got this connection what I should do is just tidy it up a little bit let's go back to it and do the tidy up process add to new folder dummy part my plates add to new folder plates my bolts need to be excluded from the bill of materials okay and add those to the fastener folder uh, fastener folder move up my member sketches um, so we don't create circular references anywhere now I've got ourselves a connection now what we want to do is we want to upload this connection to uh, to the library so that we can reuse it let's go back to the other connection 
I'll come back to this one later. Um, we're running out of time here. If I come back to this connection, for us to move this connection up into our library so that we can reuse it, you simply open up the uh, connection itself. Now, I just want to test this connection before I upload it to make sure it's going to work the way I want it to. The only thing that should be left behind is the web stiffener behind and this plate which is the keeper plate at the end. Oh, by the way, if you cannot select the connection, you just simply suppress it. This is a SolidWorks TSD misunderstanding. It's something that we're still working on trying to work out what causes it, but if you just simply suppress it and unsuppress it, it brings it back in so that you can use it. Now, I want to have just that plate there shown and the web stiffener behind. Like I said, to test it, we just go in here and go hide excluded components, and the only things that should show is the web stiffener and the plate. So that means that's all that's going to show up in our drawings as we work or create our templates for this process. Okay, so now I'm just going to show the excluded components again, bring it back in again. Let's go into this connection. Now, for us to um, move this connection into the library, it cannot have any external references. And the way to find out whether it's got external references, you'll see straight away, just in here, we've got this little arrow and that little arrow telling us that there are external references. So I'm just going to edit the sketch, click on the line and remove the linear um, link. And you'll notice that when I exit the sketch, the arrow disappears, okay? Same with this one. Remove the linear link. And the reason they're there is because they're locked to the driving sketch to which we created or inserted the connection onto. Now, if I just do a, a rebuild, and what I want to do now is just check to see if there are anything else that's at a lower level that could be connected to something else outside of our, our connection library. Oh, sorry, our library connection. And to do that, if you write, if you click on File and go to Find References, it'll tell you whether there is a link outside. Okay. And to do that, you go to Flat View, and there is one. Okay. It's happening right here. All right. The reason that this has happened is because we've inserted this connection in an assembly in context through an assembly into a part. So we've done a double in context process. So the actual uh, issue occurs at this part. Okay, and the reason I say that is because this is what we created using it. So I'm just going to go in and have a look. Uh, look at this. We've got two links. They could be linking to other components. And if you just simply right mouse click and go list external references, it'll tell you where it's coming from. Okay, we've got member sketch two, <clears throat> which is also inside um, that connection. So that one there should be fine. The other one might not be fine. Quickest way to find out is to do a parent-child relationship on that. So we go down into here and parent-child, and you'll see that through looking at the links, everything should be okay for us to upload. Okay, I'm going to, however, just remove that last one just to ensure that uh, we are not attaching to anything else. And I'll come back, close that part off, go back into the assembly and edit the part. So there's a little bit of pre-work here to do before you um, go further. And we need to edit the sketches and lock them in place onto the other sketch, which is at the assembly above. So it's going to make that equal, parallel, and I'm going to lock one end. So that's fully defined. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. And I'm going to make that equal, parallel, and that one should be snapped on at the end. And it tells me it's fully defined down the bottom. <coughs> so now my connection should be able to be uploaded to the library. Okay, I don't have any external references. I know that because when I go back to my find references again, there's nothing looking outside of the folder. You'll notice that they've all got the same folder. Okay, so we're right to go. Um, before we do, we just want to make sure that our drawing is okay. Yep, that's right to go. Just a quick check. All right, let's upload. So we go to TST Connections, Upload Connection. This is an end connection. So we select End, and we go Tick, and now that adds it to the library so that we can reuse it again and again. Now, if you've got multiple seats of TSD and uh, you've, you've set it up, as soon as this gets uploaded to the library, everyone else can see it and use it. That's the beautiful thing about having a data concentric sort of arrangement. So I'm just going to save that, close that. Now if I come over to here, I don't have a beam here, but I'm just going to show you how I can reuse that connection again and this will be the, the, the finale as we're running out of time. Alright, so I'm just going to put a beam along that edge. So members, uh, anyone will do. Structure, 
uh, section, sorry, pick my beam. I just want to test it because that's what you've got to do with your connections when you create them. You've got to test them. Okay, so let's put that connection in there now. If I go to my TSD connections, I want to put an end plate connection in. It'll be the last connection that I've added to the list of connections. Um, did I put it under end? It's not showing for some reason. Did I put it under end? Where did my connection go? Sometimes you have to be careful about where you put your connections. And uh, let's go back up into there. To do to upload a connection, you can find out whether or not the connection is in where it should be by simply clicking modify existing connection. And we'll go down here and see if the end plate is there. I must have put it somewhere else by accident. There are some others there. I'll upload it again just to make sure that we're in the right process here. Connections, upload. I selected end. Click my tick. And we'll make sure that that connection is in the library before we uh, go back. Um, we actually have to get out to do that and go into that level. So end. So that's the list of end plate connections and it should have appended it. Oh, well, I don't know where it went in the last one, but anyway, it's there now. <laughs> Odd. Anyway, so I can now turn around here, click my connection that I'm going to insert, the point at which it's going to go, the member it's going into, and the member that's bolting to it. So that puts my connection in. And with the insertion of the connection, we need to position it. You'll notice that there's this angle mate in place here, which we can flip our connection around in any direction and that positions our connection so we've put that connection in that member now and if we go into the actual section that uh, that more the welded member you'll see that that connection now belongs to it we just test it to make sure it works hide excluded components and uh, oh by the way this is this functionality where we're trying to determine suppression and unsuppression processes we'll bring it back again and now we can run it again hide components and now the only thing that's left is our plate and when we do our hide components it removes the whole dummy connection process so that all you see is just the plates that are associated to that okay now there's nothing in this beam so you won't see the mating plane plate now if we wanted to change our plates we've got we've got another little function just to cap things off so that you can see how we can change things You've put your project into our structural engineer and uh, he's come back and I'll just turn this back on. He's come back and said that uh, 12 mil plate isn't going to suffice, it needs to be 16. So we're going to uh, simply just uh, bring our, our, our connection back in again so that we can see where we're at. <clears throat> and we've got what we call match dims. So let's just say on this one plate here, it needs to be 16. And that changes those two plates, but we don't have the change on the other plate here. And if I had plenty of other beams around that are associated that are similar, you could use our match, um, a utilities match dimensions, which is coming out in 2014 as well. This is a plate. We don't want to modify the assembly, so we untick that. We click the plate that we're going to uh, match from, and then we go around. Whoops, I'll go back again. And then we go around to this one here. I don't know why that's not picking click that plate there and you'll notice that we've got a couple of sketches that are coming in the boss extrude is the thickness one so we click that and then we click all the dimensions that are associated to it and add them to the change and if I click my tick it'll automatically update them to 16 and now they're all 16s you could say oh you just double click on that plate and change it to 16 and that'll be quicker but what if you've got lots lots of plates to change in one go and you want to make sure you get them all that's a really good um, uh, function that will allow you to do that. So you can see I've created a connection here that uh, could potentially change in its, its shape or form because I've, I'm able to change the section sizes and they will automatically update based on that section size and move in. The trims will automatically update, the whole connection will automatically update based on parametric behavior because of the way I've created it. Um, so if our structural engineer decides to come along and say to us we need to change the beam at the end, so if we were to uh, use our match weldments and he says I don't want that beam to be the um, 310UB32, I want to make it a uh, say a 530UB82, something like that. We then can um, 
And I should have selected the connection at this end and changed that before I went to the 530 UB82. But anyway, I've got it there. If I click my tick, that'll change the section and you can see the whole connection automatically change and update to suit. Pretty powerful tool, um, and now you can see everything has dropped, dropped through, um, and everything is associated to it. Now I could trim this back just by editing it um, like this. Um, actually, the connection isn't in that member, so I can't trim that back. But as soon as I put the connection in there, I can trim it back. We'll cover that one later, but that just is to demonstrate that now we can create connections faster than we have before, and the process is quite simple. We can create any connection we like and it's, it's quite open and then we can reuse it whenever we like after we've created it. Um, so simply that's uh, that's our new function that we've put in and uh, just just want to uh, show you how that function works. Um, for those that uh, missed today's webinar they'll get a, an email to let them know that uh, you know we've, we've gone through this process. We record the entire process uh, so you'll get a link to the video we put it on YouTube if you've got any questions, please send them to support at the steel detailer. Um, we simply just want to uh, make sure that you get the best uh, sort of uh, you know, experience possible using TSD and SolidWorks. Um, thank you for your time today. If, you've, if you're starting your day, thank you for, for coming in and spending your time. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. And if uh, you, you, you're going into uh, the evening and uh, you finish your day, yeah, have a good evening. And uh, we'll see you next week. Um, we've cancelled the uh, webinars for the evenings um, primarily because it's just due to a lack of interest the morning ones seem to get a lot more people and this morning we certainly got that um, we'll cancel it until uh, others request to have it back um, until until next week uh, yeah enjoy the rest of your week we'll catch you later